Eric Burgess here with Music Marketing TV. Today we're looking at Blue Cat Audio's DP Meter Pro. So this is a metering plugin, a fantastic metering plugin. Has a lot of bells and whistles. I want to dive into specifically crest value and understanding what crest value means and is. Uh, but we will cover a little bit of the other things. Most of it's pretty straightforward. It's a metering plugin, like you would expect. It tells you how loud stuff is, but interpreting those results is kind of a crucial bit. So I'm going to go ahead and play for you a little bit of this track. It's not really mixed yet. It's got some general levels set up, but not mixed yet. And just so you can see the meter sort of working and what kind of feedback it gives while it's working, then we're going to talk about what crest value is and uh, some interpretations on when it might indicate a problem and when it might indicate, you know, what you want. So let's go ahead. Let's just listen to this real quick. I'm going to stop it there and I'm going to freeze it real quick just so we can get whoops a vibe of what's going on here. All right. So let's just take a look at all the main components real quick. We have our general numbers up here. We've got a max and then we have our averages over here, which is really nice. Um, we've got our meter and a, what a cool thing you can do with the meter too is if you come down here to audio analysis. So right now, right, it's left and right and they're labeled as such. You can go to mid side mid side and if your mids dip when you do this and you see like your mids go down quite a bit evidence of phase cancellation you're going to want to check whatever if you're using delays or something just know that it's not going to come across that great in mono if you see your mids suddenly dip so there's a little uh cool side thing you can do i love meters that include mid side it's i don't know why meters don't do that sometimes now, then we have our crest factor down here, something that's not often included, extremely handy to have. Really specifically, I'm interested in the number, but it's cool to see it has its own histogram and you can see it on a meter. And then you have your audio analysis to change, you know, how, how fast the analysis takes place, what triggers it, those kinds of things. And then uh, histogram length, how long your histogram's up for. And then this can actually generate... Uh, all, um, envelopes so you can use it for side chaining and things like that if you're so inclined and then we have finally a really nifty graph of all the meters down here now I'm gonna lose this middle section here we don't really need it so I'm gonna just take this out I believe it's uh, this one yep and okay so we have here these graphs and what is a crest factor so a crest factor is simply the difference between the peak level which is just the loudest moment instantaneous moment so if you take the, the single loudest point that would be the peak and then the rms level is a way of measuring the average loudness now humans we hear more on a average loudness kind of way than we do in a peak kind of way if i were to come up and snap right next to your ear it's going to sound um, not as loud as it actually is because the sound is so fast it's because you have those three bones in your ear the the ossicles and so when you're the hammer, anvil, and stirrup trigger, the sound has to get through that. And because of that, there's like a little buffer window. So we actually hear more on an average kind of a way than we do on a peak kind of a way. So we typically are going to use RMS values, which are better measurements for the average, uh, than we would peak values to mix because it's going to it's gonna help us achieve a better sense of how it will sound when everything is balanced. But we definitely still hear peak values. It's still a thing. And so there's a, a dancing act that goes on here. And a crest value is kind of the result of this conundrum. So a crest value is the difference between the peak value and the RMS value or the average value, so to speak. RMS stands for root mean square. Uh, if you're interested, you can go check that out. So anyways, crest value is just the difference between these. So if you have a large crest value, all that means is that the peaks are a lot further away from the average. And if you have a small crest value, that just means the peaks are much closer to the average. Examples, I think, make it most clear. Say you have violins that are playing a very smooth legato line. No sudden transients of any kind. No sudden moments of loudness. And because of that, 
the the peak loudness will be very close to the average loudness because there's no moment that really jumps out. They're all the same kind of the whole way through. And as a result, your crest value will be incredibly small, you know, like one or two dB, very, very small crest value. Now, if you have, you know, an orchestra playing these big stabs followed by moments of silence, the silence is going to make the average go way down. And so, and then the peaks will be really far away and you'll see a bigger crest value show up. Now comes the hard part. How do you know when a crest value is telling you that something's wrong or not? Is a big crest value bad? Is a small crest value bad? The answer is it depends. And, but it's, it's a little easier once you understand what crest value is, how to interpret if it's telling you an issue or not. So my first and number one recommendation is to get some reference tracks, pick tracks that are like the ones that you have that have similar instruments and see where their crest values sound like. And of course, pick a reference track that you want to sound like and uh, just see where their values are sitting, see where their average and their peak is. And interestingly, um, if these two things go down at the same amount, then the crest value is not going to move very much. Like you'll you will not see a crest value on this graph go high like ever unless you have a, a very unusual track that you want to sound like. The crest value itself does not care about level itself. It only cares about the difference between these two levels. And this makes it really useful uh, for measuring things like dynamics. It's not it's not like the most accurate because like sudden spikes are not good. It's not a good way to measure dynamics, but the crest value will take that into account. So those are discussions sort of for like another time. In general, it does okay. It does a good job and it's good measurements. And when you get your reference track, you'll be able to see like, okay, in their area where they have less stuff going on, what's their crest value at? What is their RMS value at? What, you know, what's going on over there? And in the drop, what are they hitting? What's their crest value during the drop or whatever? And you can compare the different sections because what's good for classical was gonna be very different than what's good for ska versus what's good for EDM. Uh, dubstep, electro, all that kind of stuff, you know, they're going to be different. So you're going to want to have tracks that mimic that. And then once you've got that, you can kind of look at it and say, okay, what would be an indication of a problem? Well, say I've got an EDM track and the drums are hitting along and I like the way the drums sound, but I noticed my crest value is very big, like 15, like something that's kind of unusually large. And you look at this and you go, hmm, actually 15 is not too large. Let's say it was like 20, 22. Somewhere up in that range. You look at that and you go, ooh. Because what that means is the average level is quite a ways away from whatever's causing the transients, which is probably your drum track. Or if you have some sort of synth that's very percussive, playing these short little bips and boops, uh, that could also cause the crest value to increase uh, a bunch too from the average. And so that's an indication that, hey, you might want to either bring down the... You might want to bring down those transient parts or raise the average level. Generally, you want to bring those down. One way to tackle it, right, if you're doing a master, is you say, okay, well, this is an indication of maybe I should compress a bit more. And it kind of tells you how you should go after the peaks. And then you run into more uh, interesting questions, like how am I going to do this without ruining the punch of the track? And those that all comes down to how you choose to apply your compression. But that's so that's one example of something a crest value could tell you. If your crest value is very small and you're wondering why your track's lacking punch, well, it's because there's not really a difference between the peak level and the average level. So there's not any room for punch. And so that's that's one reason why your track is lacking punch. And you might look for ways to increase the difference between them, uh, maybe through dynamic expansion. I mean, you've got you've got a lot of tools, but this is some of the ways to interpret a crest value. So that's the DP meter pro very, very handy meter. I really love how visual it is. I mean, you got to love visual stuff, but I also love that this is top front and center and you get some just solid information back that you can begin to work with right away. If you have any questions about this, feel free to let me know, subscribe and hit that bell icon for future videos and have a blessed day.